I think the key when you're understanding passages like this in James, who was James writing to? What was the context that he was writing to? And does it apply today? These are some of the questions that I would always ask. Now, if you want to know where the context of James 2 is, look at James 1.1. 1, 1. James, a bond servant of God, of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes who are dispersed abroad. Greetings. Okay, so his audience were Jewish people who either were believers in Jesus or were on that pathway or weren't believers in Jesus, and yet they were suffering persecution and he was trying to help them understand what was going on. But he was speaking to them in the context of their understanding of the old covenant and of faith, which was an old covenant principle. If you look at Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, you'll see that it says, do not lay again a foundation of dead works, for repentance from dead works, faith in God. So that was an old covenant. And if you read Hebrews 11, you'll see all of those mentioned there died in faith, having not seen. So faith is the evidence of things not seen. You don't need faith in the new covenant because we've all seen Jesus. We've all engaged Jesus. We all know God. So we don't need faith for that. But they did need faith in the old co covenant testament because they didn't meet God. They didn't know him. They only had a mediator of a priest or a king or a prophet. So they never had a personal relationship with God. So they needed faith to believe in someone they hadn't met. They had all the stories about him, and yet very few of them met him. So they needed faith to believe in a God they hadn't met. So in that context, he's talking to them about their old covenant understanding of faith and not a new covenant understanding of faith, which is we live by the faith of the Son of God. So it's his faith in us and his belief about us we live in, not in our faith in him if we live in our faith with him do we have enough faith do we have a mustard seeds faith how much that's why so many people actually struggle with security in knowing their eternal salvation is because they don't know whether their faith was good enough or acceptable enough or they had enough of it and but we don't need to have our faith because our faith in god would be a work we live by our salvation is by grace through his faith which is his gift to us so we don't boast in our faith that's the whole point of ephesians it says we live by grace through faith that being a gift not of our own lest we boast so it's not our faith anyway so this whole thing of faith and works and do i need faith and do i need to evidence my faith by my work is an old covenant concept completely and some of what he says here wasn't true anyway actually it wasn't Abraham's works that justified him. His, it was his actual acceptance of what God said that brought him righteousness. He was made righteous according to his belief in what God said, not by the works that he did. So, yes, he did trust God and therefore offered his son, but he wasn't justified by the doing of that work. He believed God. He trusted God. That was the reality so faith and works is irrelevant in the new testament now of course in my relationship with god i will outwork my relationship with god through who i am because i'm made in his image and i'm his son and i obviously want to represent him on earth as in heaven so when it says man is justified by works and not faith alone that is an old covenant concept not a new one we are saved by faith and justified well by grace and justified by his faith in other words he made us righteous he made us the righteousness of god in christ he declared us not guilty and innocent therefore justified through what jesus did on the cross by dealing with all the accusations against us so there's no accusation to uh, to stand before we're justified we're innocent we're not guilty we don't have to prove that it's true we realize it and enter into it and live in it, but we don't need to be justified by works. We don't need to be justified by faith other than what he has done. That is what's done it, not my faith in what he has done. See, the truth that I know will set me free. I need to know the reality of my relationship with God face to face, knowing him, knowing myself in him, believing what he believes about me. And I therefore live that way. Galatians 2.20, 
you know, talks about, you know, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who lives. So I'm not living the old way in the old mindset, in the old system of do it yourself. I'm not living by the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You know, the life I now live in the flesh. So yes, I died with Christ, but I'm resurrected with him in new life. I'm a new creation. And that life now I live by the faith of the son of God. So I live by his belief in me, not my belief in him. So hopefully that will give you some idea of not being caught up with old covenant beliefs in a new covenant perspective. Therefore, you don't need repentance from dead works, faith in God, baptisms, laying on of hands, the, the doctrine of eternal judgment and resurrection of the dead, because all of that from that context was old covenant. We now live in the actual fulfillment of all the covenants and old covenant in christ who was the fulfillment of all the promises of god we're in the new covenant that he made with the father and we're included in him therefore there is no covenant for us to keep he's already kept it he won't break it therefore it is secure and we're safe in it if you enjoy these videos would you please take a moment to like comment and subscribe it really does help thank you very much